Let's talk some sports, baby. Take a bye, Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry. Back to Iguodala. Up for the layup. Oh, blocked by Jones. And remember, make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we're going to do. We're going to holler at you until next time, baby. All right, fellas, let's move on back to the NFL and begin our NFL draft grades. Similarly to how we rolled the team previews, we'll revisit each division, team by team, and analyze how they did with letter grades. These are mostly based off of the draft and the team needs, but we'll also consider trades and picks used to trade for players. And we'll start today with the AFC East. So, Jay, the Dolphins are up first. How would you like their 400 picks? Uh, <laughs> 400. They did, they did a good job. The Dolph- Dolphins get an A here. Uh, they got their franchise quarterback uh, to a – well, we think we thought that was going to happen despite, you know, some smoke screens we were seeing uh, late before the draft. And then just structurally, you look at the way they draft uh, seven of their 11 picks uh, were up front in the trenches. So I really like that. I'm a big believer in uh, when you're in the rebuilding stage, uh, build up those offensive and defensive lines because it, that's where it all starts. And then and you, you got um, Austin Jackson, Robert Hunt, Solomon Kinley. Uh, with with Tua, you know he's cut, comes with some injury concerns, so I like how they make it a pro, they made it a priority um, to be, uh, to beef up that offensive line, and they got a bunch of young guys in there who can grow with Tua, so I really like that. And then you look in the later rounds, uh, in the fifth round, Jason Strobridge and Curtis Weaver, they were guys that had pretty pretty high grades. I don't think those guys were expected to drop into the fifth round, so they got some really good value there. So. Overall, I think they did a really good job. They get an A. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I agree with the A, evidently. And before I get into exactly what I gave, I just want to say uh, I did look at all seven rounds. I'm only going to hit on the first three rounds for the sake of time. I don't want to drag this out no longer than it has to be. So I, I gave my A plus for the draft. And listen, they drafted Tua. He's a home run. To me, besides his injury history, I don't really see the downfall of uh, drafting him. And you get to sit him, and he, and he will get healthy behind Fitzpatrick. So you're not even in a rush to play him. Then that second pick, Austin Jackson, the offense tackle out of USC. They took him 18th overall. I like that they didn't go with best player available. They went with what they needed. Everybody know behind quarterback, offensive line is that second need. So I, I give them kudos for that. And Jackson had a mixture of first and second round grades. So even if you say, hey, it was a reach, I mean, it depends on who you talk to. It's in the eye of the beholder. So it was a good pick in my eyes. And then that third pick, um, Noah Imigane, uh, the cornerback out of Auburn, they, they used that third pick on him. At first, as the draft was going on, I'm thinking to myself, is these guys serious? What is this? As I actually sat back and thought about where did Brian Flores come from? How did Brian Flores cut his teeth in this game? Who taught him a good amount of what he know? Well, Bill Belichick. We know Bill Belichick liked to have multiple DBs on the, on the field at one time, three, possibly more than that. So once I actually got that thought across my head, I thought, actually, this don't look as bad as I initially thought. So, yeah, um, I, I gave uh, the Dolphins an A+. Plus. Yeah, I think it was easy to say they just won the day because of, they had, of all their picks. But um, And obviously, I really liked that they stayed the course and took Tua. They didn't trade out. They didn't do anything stupid. They just, you know, they took their player. They got their guy. They didn't mess around. Um, you know, and the other the other selections in Jackson and uh, Ibn Gane were, were, they were a little bit, a lot of people said they were reaches. I don't really consider them reaches either because I think that you had the luxury of taking a little more project guys because you have a little bit of time on your hands. You know, the Dolphins aren't going to be a team that's going to compete next year. So if you think they're going to be all pros, even if they are a little out of your range, just take them because you've got time to develop these guys. Um, it's not that big of a deal. The day two picks I wasn't that sold on. Hunt and Jones I thought were both kind of reaches on most of the big boards. Uh, Raekwon Davis, he concerns me a little, but you know he can still develop into a factor for sure. And then I think day three really kind of brought it back up with uh, Curtis Weaver in the fifth round. That was a big steal. And then, you know, even Malcolm Perry in the seventh. I watched the Navy football. That dude's kind of good. So uh, I thought they had a, a solid day, a very solid day one, a, a day two, and a very good day three. And uh, I gave him a B-plus overall. So we'll go ahead and roll to the Jets next, Drink. Who you got? What you got for them? 
Oh, for the Jets, you know, they had an excellent draft. I gave them an actual A++. I thought they had the second best draft behind the Broncos, which we'll get to later. Um, look, they draft um, Makai Becton, the offensive tackle out of Louisville with the 11th pick overall. Hey, he's a day one starter, and quite frankly, what I'm hearing, he got the best footwork of all the offensive tackles that's in the draft. Footwork is very important when you talk about those big guys on the outside. They got to move a lot of weight. They got to shift in different directions at a very rapid pace. And listen, evidently he's something serious when it comes to the run game, which I'm pretty sure Le'Veon Bell is very happy to hear about that this year. <laughs> now, that second pick, Denzel Mims, the wide receiver out of Baylor, the 59th pick overall, hey, I thought he was, he was going to go a little higher. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the Jets got a good guy here. He's going to be a day one starter. He's a big physical uh, down the field threat. Only problem is, if you're bringing him in to replace uh, Anderson, he's not a burner like Anderson, but he does win most of his 50-50 balls. So that Sam Dono is a guy that throw a high number of 50-50 balls. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them capitalize that off of that. Then the third pick, Ashton Davis, the safety out of California, the 68 pick. Hey, listen, this guy could have been a day one, should have been a day two guy but end up being a day three guy. So he, he, you know, he might not start or get big minutes when the season starts, but he'll definitely be in the rotation, and we'll see how it goes from now. So, yeah, uh, as far as the Jets went, I gave my A++. Yeah, I, I gave the Jets a B. I liked what they did, just wasn't overly impressed. Um, I'm looking at Beckton. Out of those four top tackles, um, he's the one I'm probably uh, a look, got a little bit of concern about. I think at that size, uh, he could have some difficulty uh, against smaller speed rushers, but we'll see. I mean, he's great at the combine, and he's gotten a lot of high praise uh, from around the league. So, But the the need was definitely there um, at, the, at the offensive line and at left tackle. So... The Jets, we'll see how it goes. They, they could, they could have their left tackle. We'll see. Uh, Denzel Mims really liked that pick uh, in the second round. I don't think the Jets were in a position to be all that picky in type of receiver, whether it's speed or possession. That they just need guys that can catch the ball, and they, they didn't worry about how they fit when they got enough of them uh, to to put around Sam Darnold so you can throw him the football. And Ashton Davis, I thought that was a really good pick, uh, especially when you consider Jamal Adams. Uh, is he is he going to be there long term with some of the, you know, the some of the conversations we've heard, whether it be trade talks, whether it be him being unhappy. And then uh, Jabari Zaniga, I thought defensive line, that was a position that they also could use a little help at. And he's a guy that could turn out to be a, a steal in that third round. I think Michael P. Ryan in the fourth round. I think he's a guy – I think you need a little bit more behind Le'Veon Bell. And we, we saw Le'Veon Bell didn't live up to it in the first year. So you need you do need a second back in there to help you out. And Bryce Hall in the fifth round, I think he could be in the steal of the draft. I was stunned he fell that far. Yeah, I really like this Jets draft as well. Um, they've had some real head scratchers recently, but this one really does feel different. Uh, Beckton in the most upside of any prospect, you know, at left tackle in the draft. And then Mims, like y'all says, it was a great follow-up in round two. I like that they went to the left tackle first. They drafted the best available position that they kind of needed. And then they circled back to a deeper position where they could have still got some really good value. And luckily for them, Mims was waiting there in round two. And that guy could be really good. Uh, Davis, yeah, again, out of uh, Cal, he could be Jamal Adams' replacement. You know, so that kind of gives them a little bit of an out with all these Jamal Adams trade talks. If they if they do want to make a move, they've got a lot like they can be a lot more confident in that move now. And I also highlight, you know, James Morgan uh, at FIU, the quarterback. He's one of I think he's one of the best project quarterbacks you had in this draft. And yeah, Bryce Hall uh, on day three was just that was criminal. That was absolute robbery. Um, he, he can flat out play football. And I, I was stunned again that he fell that far. Uh, I was a little more down the Zuniga pick just because it was the third round. I thought he was going to be a little later. Uh, you know, there's some questions regarding his athleticism, and he's only won 13% against Power 5 tackles in his career, according to PFF, not according to me. So um, I would have liked him in like the fourth or fifth, but, you know, hey, third, you like the guy, you take him. All right, whatever. So, yeah, overall, I, I could slap an A on this draft class, no problem. Uh, we're going to move back to the Bills, Jay. What would you think of them? Uh, slightly above average for me. I gave him a C plus. I was a little hard on him. Uh, I didn't take into account Stefan Diggs, the trade of that first round pick. Um, I do think in the second and third round, I think with AJ Epinesa and Zach Moss, um, those picks, they do feel needs. I talked about needing a little bit more, uh, in the pass rush. And I think 
I think Zach Moss could be an effective complement to what, what what they have in Devin Singletary. Uh, they did they didn't address the cornerback position until the seventh round with Dane Jackson. I, I don't know how much um, you'll get from him. So all in all, I, I wasn't overly impressed. But when you do factor in the Stephon Diggs uh, trade, I think they did a good. I think they did do a good job. Yeah. Um, um. When it comes to the Bills, I gave them a B plus. Um, listen, they got A.J. Espinosa, the defensive end out of Iowa with the 54 pick. And listen, he could have been a first round pick. So getting him in the second round is a steal. And for he's for sure going to bolster up that defensive line that's not a slouch from the start. So you can't really be mad at that. But their second pick, they took Zach Moss, the running back out of Utah with the 86 pick. Listen, a great complimentary power back piece to add in the backfield with Devin Singletary. I think now you have a very solid one-two punch in the backfield, and this should, over time, release some pressure off of Josh Allen, hopefully. Um, and then with the with the third pick, uh, they went with Gabriel Davis, the wide receiver out of UCF with the 128th pick. You know, a good pick for where the Bills was able to pick a, a wide receiver in the fourth round. So, you know, they, they don't have a dire need for wide receiver because of the before mentioned Stephon Diggs deal in the um, in free agency. However, it's always good to have depth at any position. So if you got depth at wide at the wide receiver position, it is what it is. Yeah, I think if you factor in the use of that first round pick, you know, to form one of the better wide receiver traders in football, then I, I think the Bills are really happy with this draft. Um, you know, Epineza was a guy we mocked to several teams in our pre-draft previews. And uh, not only do I like the pick as far as like the value of him falling well into the second round, but he's going to really fit well in that new 4-3 front they've sort of moved to and is, as a very good like interior rusher. You can kind of put him on the outside or you can move him inside on more rushing down. So I like he'll have a lot of flexibility on that front there. Uh, I also like the addition of Austin Davis, obviously, to help out Josh Allen. I think he needs, you know, a little bit more help. And you got to think that Moss fell more than he should have also. Um, I'm not a big Jake Fromm believer, but I, I can't see him being good backup insurance for Allen. And that system, you know, I could I could envision a world where Josh Allen, like, hurts a shoulder. He's out for three weeks and Fromm comes in there and floats the boat and they go one and two or two and one. You know, like I, I could see that happening. So so I do like that. Um I would say that uh, I would say one issue that you did kind of have with this draft, it was kind of light on linemen on either side outside of uh, Epinesa. So I, I always like to see at least a couple big guys, you know, and only got the one really. So, but overall, you know, I, when you throw in the trade, I, I give it a A minus. So drink, we'll wrap up with the Patriots. Uh, which, what do you got for them? So I ended up giving the Patriots a B. Um, I wasn't overly uh, blown away with what they did. I, I just expected a little more, I guess. So starting with Kyla Digger, the, the safety out of Lenore Ryan, that's a Division two, you know, school for all you cats that don't know, uh, with the 37th pick. And, you know, the, the special thing about this guy is he can also play linebacker as well as safety. So I think when you get a player like this, you can get to work him out in both positions. If he's good enough, you can play him in both positions. But we know that that Patriots defense got a lot of holes that they need to fill. So – he a solid fit at one of the two positions of needs for the for this Patriots defense. So I like that. I like that, that versatility. Then with the second pick, they took uh, Josh Uche, the linebacker out of UCLA with the 60, or 60 overall pick. Hey, I think this guy should be a day one starter. I don't see why he wouldn't be. But, um, you know, he's going to need some uh, fine tuning, a bit of fine tuning. But I don't, you know, if Bill Belichick is this master that everybody say he is, I don't see the problem. He should be able to get them up and ready to go from day one. We'll see. Coronavirus infect everything. And then with the third pick, uh, Anthony Jennings, the outside linebacker out of Alabama, they took with the uh, 87 pick. Listen, this guy, I, I personally know being an Alabama fan, very good pass rusher. However, he's kind of in a tour situation. He have dealt with multiple injuries while at Alabama. So if he can stay healthy, he would definitely be a benefit. But we got to see how that body holds up to the impact on a professional level. Yeah, I, I got I'm about the same as drink on the uh, Patriots. I gave him a B minus. Um, I thought their first three picks were uh, really good, depending uh, particularly with what where they were positioned. Uh, they traded back out of the first round. Didn't like what they saw there. Uh, Kyle Duggar, not going to pretend uh, I've watched a lot of tape on him. 
But uh, if we know uh, when it comes to preparation and, and scouting, you know, Bill Belichick is going to know uh, what the deal is on a guy before he takes them. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt there. And the versatility that you mentioned, whether it be linebacker safety, uh, the Patriots are pretty deep in that secondary. So I think it's definitely a possibility where we could see him playing some sub package linebacker. And then Josh Uche, they need, they need help in the pass rush. I don't think that's no secret. And Anthony Jennings, those two guys, Uche and Jennings, are going to be key moving forward. And I think they could play very early uh, with how that front seven, it's a little, it's a little weak to, uh, with all the departures they've had the past couple of years. And I think I think Anthony Jennings, along with Dante Hightower, that could be a, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, they didn't get a quarterback in this draft. Uh, I, I expected they would take one in the later rounds. They didn't. But we, we, we also said there was a possibility that they wouldn't address it in this round. Uh, I like what they did in their first three picks. After that, a little less sold, though. Yeah, this, I mean, this feels like a Patriots draft if there ever was one. You know, um, I'd start with the good and say that I did like the trade as well coming out of the first round, getting L.A. second and third round. That's actually a pretty good value. You look at the value charts and whatnot. Uh, and it was a good move considering the lack of premium picks. Uh, Uche is another, you know, like y'all said, I like him a lot as well. And he's a really good match in that scheme, man. He's going to be right at home. You know, as a guy, can also, he can come off the edge and rush, but he can also drop back and cover some. Um, I also can't really knock that investment in the offensive line later on. Uh, uh, Winnow and Heron both seem to be real highly thought of among offensive line scouts. So I can see those guys fitting right at home in the Patriots sort of scheme there. Uh, but there's, you know, there's a lot you don't want to like, too, about this. And I, I, I don't – I guess on, on Kyle Duger, my thing is this. Like, you invested your most premium pick in a position in which you were already really, really solid at. And – then you're going to go, oh, well, I didn't get a quarterback or I didn't have this to do that. I, I just I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I, maybe if he's a guy you think just an absolute slam dunk home run. All right. But uh, in the double dip at tight end in the third round of a fairly weak class, you know, you took a fifth round kicker. You probably could have picked up with a nice bonus as an undrafted free agent. Uh, and I get it. You know, in two years, you guys are all going to be home. They're all going to be pro bowlers and we're going to be sitting there laughing. But I mean, at the end of the day, like. The draft is what it is, but at the end of the day, you're putting Jared Sidham out there week one. So I, I hope Kyle Duger and the rest of this crew are, are all that good because for me, it's a C until, you know, they prove me wrong. 